Let's bring in Adam Rittenberg, who does an awesome job covering the Big Ten, covering college football for ESPN. Adam, always good to talk to you. What's going on? Uh, good to be with you guys. Crazy day, uh, but certainly not a surprising one in the Big Ten. Yeah, so give us – why don't we start there? Give us the Big Ten perspective of all this, kind of why – I'm not sure people understand how important these commissioner jobs are, how much money they make and how much power they have, especially the big 10 job. I think that's the one surprising part of all this is that someone, I think it makes sense for Kevin Warren. I think we understand that, but it's just surprising to see somebody just walk away from one of these commissioner jobs. Yeah, it is. And I think there's a couple of factors, Adam, you know, one of them is that I don't know if Kevin Warren was ever a great fit, in the Big Ten in some ways, um, in terms of his leadership style, in terms of, you know, the relationships that, that, that just weren't ever where they needed to be with athletic directors and some of the other people who had been around college athletics uh, for, for a lot longer than Kevin. Um, and then you have 2020, which was literally the worst way to start a job like this. And obviously the decisions that happened that year, um, you know, it's, in some cases could, could never be repaired, some of those relationships. But you know, Kevin Warren did, I, I thought, a lot of really good things uh, during his time at the Big Ten. And so much of the commissioner jobs, you mentioned the power, uh, it revolves around the media rights contract. So, you know, that is the thing, even if you're in the job for three years or if you're in the job for 30 years, like Jim Delaney was before Kevin, you know, that's the thing that consumes you. Jim Delaney told me that was the thing he thought about every single day as Big Ten commissioner about, you know, what's going to happen with the media rights contract. So Kevin obviously did one of those last year, a, a historic one in terms of the scope, in terms of the revenue. And after that, um, it, you know, it was almost like, okay, well, what, what's, how much longer is he going to uh, be at the Big Ten? Because the ties to the NFL, the fact that his leadership style and, and the relationship building never really clicked, it, it, at least at the administrator level. I think it was better at the presidential level. Was he going to be there another two years? Was he going to be there another five years? Was he going to do another media rights deal? Probably not. So he was never going to be a longtime Big Ten commissioner. I, that, that's just my belief. Um, and, and also in talking to people around the conference. But this is obviously soon. This is the shortest tenure by far of anyone who sat in that seat in the Big Ten. So, Adam, one, it's great to see you. Thank you for, you know, quickly responding to my text and jumping on this podcast. Really appreciate it. Adam was my former professor at DePaul and uh, really appreciate it. Um, Adam, what, is, what does this mean for the Bears now, now that Kevin Warren's going to be in this president CEO role for, for Chicago, obviously after, you know, ending his tenure with the, with the Big Ten? Yeah, I think for the Bears, it, it, you know, it, it definitely projects as a, a tremendous hire. Because, um, you know, he has experience in the NFL with multiple franchises. He has experience in Minnesota with, you know, get, getting a stadium project, seeing it from start to finish, bringing in corporate sponsors, working with the city, with the state. And uh, you know, as the Bears enter such an important new phase, because they, they need their own stadium, they need the, the, this to become a more a valuable and, 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 and successful franchise, in my opinion, as someone who watches the Bears mostly from afar, I, I think this, is, this could be tremendous. Now, I do wonder, and you know, in talking to people around Kevin and even a little bit to Kevin himself a couple of weeks ago, you know, how is he going to fit in with a franchise that's still at least outwardly, and you guys may agree or disagree, I think Adam probably agrees with me, it, 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 is a mom-and-pop franchise, is a franchise that hasn't evolved mm -hmm. enough in the last you know, three or four decades. He is going to bring in different uh, ideas. He is going to bring in a style that likely won't sit well with certain people there. He's going to bring in a lot of his own people. So it's a new day for the Chicago Bears. And they have to be uh, accepting of that because he is getting tremendous control in that franchise. And the way that it was done for decades and decades is going to start changing. So I think from a credential standpoint, this is absolutely a grand slam hire. But will there be some bumps along the way? Absolutely. Um, I think there are with any new leader from the outside, but especially one who has the style of leadership that Kevin has. Well, I think George McCaskey kind of showed his hand at changing of the guards of wanting to, you know, he's never been accepting of ripping it down and rebuilding. He's always tried to patchwork. And I think last year hiring Ryan Poles was a little bit of a tell that he's kind of changing his philosophies a bit. And now with this hire, certainly, uh, as well. My question is more of a football standpoint. I think we all know at this point what he brings with his business acumen, his potential of helping with a stadium that all Bears fans are going to love when it gets built. 
But I think what a lot a lot of Bears fans are going to say is, okay, but how does how is he going to be able to help us on the football field? Can you speak to his decision making on that end of it uh, to give Bears fans some confidence, or is he strictly just a money guy? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, Kevin, you didn't play football. He was a basketball guy. I think he's more connected to basketball in some ways, even though he spent much of his career working in the NFL. You know, so he knows NFL players. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's been around franchises. He's been around football operations people, but not, not in any sort of um, role where, where he's, he has direct control over them. So that, that's going to be really interesting in terms of the relationship with Ryan Poles, with Matt Eberflus. Um, and if things don't go better with, with the, the, the next people in those chairs, I mean, that, that, that's going to be um, something to watch here. But I, I don't sense that Kevin is going to be overly hands-on on the football side, especially given where the stadium project could be going in the next few years. I mean, that's why you bring in Kevin Warren, because you look at what happened in Minneapolis and say, man, that would be great to have in Chicago or in the Chicago suburbs. We need that complex. This is the guy that can get it done. And that is such a large undertaking, as you guys know, that I, I just don't know how much time uh, Kevin will have to, you know, devote to the, the football operations side. Obviously, he's going to be involved in decisions regarding contracts and, and directions and, and, and some of the key hires. But I, I would imagine, knowing Kevin, that he is going to let Ryan Poles and his staff do, do their jobs. I tend to agree with you, too. I think I think the football side is Ryan Poles' deal, and I don't know that there's going to be much meddling in there now there's certainly crossover right when it comes to still Con contract agreements contracts and 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 things like that and i and i do think that that's where but that's where i think kevin warren's ex experience in the nfl will really pay off because adam you could speak more to really what he had to establish when he went into the big 10 in terms of relationships but all those existing relationships he had when he was with the Vikings are still there. So I, I whatever friction developed, I, I tend to think there won't be as much with him going back into the NFL. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and he has relationships at the highest levels uh, with, with many of the people that you need to have those relationships with, certainly in the NFL office. Um, he, he knows all of the general counsels around the league, which are important. He knows uh, all of the um, you know, media executives. I mean, think about what he did. I don't think he's gotten enough credit, honestly, for what happened from a media rights standpoint. Yes, the Big Ten is extremely valuable. Yes, the league makes a ton of money. But to 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 put a deal together with you know two new television partners in NBC and, and CBS and dealing with the very highest levels of, of those companies on the sporting side, you know, he has those relationships built in. So that's an advantage for, for the Bears as well. Um, you, you know, you need to deal in those in those circles. You need to deal in the NFL office circle. So, um, and he's obviously been here in Chicago, living in Chicago since uh, sometime in, I believe 2019 is when he moved to town. So, um, you know, I, I don't sense that there's going to be a lot of um, introductions that will be difficult for Kevin in the NFL space, maybe like there were in the college sports space when, you know, he, he gets the job, he, he's, he's kind of learning from Jim Delaney for about six months. And I remember talking with him guys early in 2020, about this tour that he had mapped out to try to see every single Big Ten team play. Um, and it was going to happen over, I think, 180 days or 120 days or something like that. And then COVID hits and it, it all goes away. So, so he never had a chance to establish the relationships on the front end that I think he ultimately needed to be successful at the Big Ten. Maybe those still wouldn't have, 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 have uh, gotten to a place that he needed them to, but he walks in the door to Hallis Hall with a lot of those relationships already in place from many, many years in the NFL. So again, on the bear side, I, I, I really see this being successful. Adam, you just mentioned like some of the interactions that you've, you've had with Kevin Warren and maybe didn't have the opportunity to do some more communicating, but what can you tell us about him just as a communicator in terms of when he's talking to what, whoever it may be, but what is Kevin Warren like in that aspect? Yeah, I think I think Kevin, uh, admittedly, you know, being at a podium at times, he's not at his best, um, and he did improve in, in in that in that role. That there are there are times where he comes off like a lawyer, um, mm -hmm. and and, and the, you know has has statements that are word salads, uh, which I think could sometimes frustrate people, you know, at, at the Big Ten. But I think when you get him in a setting where he can 
have confidence and be more direct. You, you can tell why he's been an effective leader and, and, and obviously ha- had a very successful career. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I would have low expectations for Tuesday's introduction, but I think the more that he gets comfortable over time uh, you know, you, I, and the more that you guys get to know, I mean, one thing that I will say about Kevin is that, that he, he went out of his way uh, to build relationships with, with, with individuals. And uh, you know, candidly, I have a, a much closer relationship with him than I had really at any point with Jim Delaney while he was commissioner. I've gotten to know Jim in some ways better since he left the Big Ten than he was than when he was actually there, whereas I got to know Kevin extremely well during his short tenure as Big Ten commissioner. So I think he, he has the ability to build relationships, but as far as a figurehead, you know, talking at press conferences – you know, there, there was some work to do there because uh, I think in some of his early opportunities, he wasn't as effective as a communicator in that setting. So uh, I, I know he's working on it. Um, and, and again, I think when if you guys have the chance to visit with him individually or in small groups, I think you'll see the, the more effective Kevin Warren communication style versus the large group setting. Adam, we'll, we'll let you go here, but I, I, I guess this isn't necessarily a Bears related question, but what, is, what do you think the Big Ten does next? Yeah, it's a really good question, Adam, um, in my world, at least. And I I just tweeted about this. There's some interesting dynamics in play because one of the other things that, again, not making excuses because Kevin did make some mistakes during his time at the Big Ten, but he had historic presidential turnover during those three years. I think there's only two or three presidents that were with the group that hired him back in 2019 that are still in their roles and, and really none that were leading that search so it, you know he, he it's it's a completely new group of presidents. Recent commissioner hires, especially at the Power Five level, have come outside of college athletics. So Kevin Warren is one of them. George Klyovkov from the Pac-12, uh, Brett Yormark from the Big Twelve. You know these are not um, you know longtime administrators. And so you know if that pattern holds, then I would expect somebody like that. Uh, just going back to my earlier statement, because of the importance of the media rights, and, and that, that is the thing that drives these athletic conferences right now. But I, I think if the athletic directors are consulted, and maybe even some of the presidents, they may be more comfortable with an insider, somebody like ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips, who we all thought would be the next commissioner, obviously from Chicago, still has a home here, was a longtime athletic director at Northwestern. Maybe they look to a veteran AD like Gene Smith or, or Jack Swarbrick, Ohio State, Notre Dame. But again, just looking at the recent pattern of these hires and how the job has changed, I, I, I certainly wouldn't be surprised if we're Googling the name when, 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 it, when it leaks, just like we were certainly George Klyovkov and Brett Yormark. Kevin Warren had been a little bit more familiar to folks, but it could be a name like that. Interesting. Greg, do you have another question? Yeah, just real quick. Um, you talk about the ups and downs of the relationships within the Big Ten. Um, the interesting wrinkle with the Bears is Justin Fields was at the head of petitioning to go back to play. Can you speak mm-hmm. to that relationship? You know, if, was, were they able to kind of patch that up or anything? Or it, is that, you know, just interested to hear about that? Yeah, it's a great question. Absolutely, they have patched it up. Um, sources close to Kevin, who I spoke to, in the last couple of weeks even brought that up that, you know, they, they have a really good relationship now. And, mm-hmm. and it really, Kevin never uh, looked at Justin as, as, as somebody who, uh, other than, other than just a, a player who wanted to play football, who, who wanted to get back on the field and was doing everything he could to rally support for that. So I, I don't think there's any uh, bad blood there at all. Um, I don't, I think Kevin is a generally for, for, a forgiving person. Uh, especially, um, you know, and, and, you know I, I, I can't see that being any sort of friction walking in the door, but it is a, a relevant one because certainly Justin had a, a, a platform and he used it to, uh, you know, in the minds of many, help that season actually start after it was initially canceled. Great. That's awesome stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you had some insight on that because I know some people were, were wondering. I, I, I had a feeling that was the case. I mean, he's a... They're was he tw- 20 years 20 years old at the time like just yeah. a kid that wanted to play football if that was any kind of a problem i think that would reflect uh poorly on kevin uh more than anything else so it's good to hear that and i wasn't too worried about it to begin with but it is good to hear that all right um adam appreciate all your work on this story and you taking the time to jump us jump on with us today and uh i hope everybody continues to follow you on twitter at espn rittenberg for all your coverage all right guys thanks for reaching out i enjoyed it and uh, have a good show